Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I'm going to share with you the books that I read in March. So I have a few different things that I read for middle grade March so I'm going to start with and then a couple of classics. If you see like <laughs> weird colors on my hands, um, I was dyeing Easter eggs with my daughter and that dye does not wash off so that's what that is. So starting with the middle grade, I read a graphic novel called The New Kid by Jerry Craft and I absolutely loved this. So it's about a kid who starts at a new school. The school is like prestigious private school and he is one of very few kids of color. So he deals with a lot of microaggressions from his fellow students and also from like teachers and admin and stuff. I mean, I haven't had this experience, but this seemed to me to be a very accurate portrayal of how the dynamics in like a middle slash high school um, would work and in this specific situation. And I also really love just like the friends he ends up surrounding himself with and the dynamics between the two characters I thought was really well done. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend New Kid to any middle grade reader you might have in your life. Um, the next middle grade book that I want to talk about is Tristan Strong Destroys the World by Kwame Mbalia. This is the second in a, what's going to be a trilogy. I think the third and final installment is coming out at some point this year. Um, so I read the first installment last year, which is Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, and I absolutely loved it. 10 out of 10. Just one of the best middle grade books. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, this book I enjoyed as well, but I just feel like it didn't quite live up to the first book. I still really love the character of Tristan. I think he's a very relatable, like, 12, 13 year old. He acts the way a kid acts in a lot of ways. He has really strong character traits and he also has flaws. So I think he's a really well-rounded character. So the story was really engaging as with the last one. I think the only reason I liked the first one more is that there were more gods and goddesses and I was kind of like missing all of those characters, missing um, a lot of the like folktale heroes that were in the first book that weren't in this one. And I feel like the book could have used more of those characters. I feel like it was lacking in that specific department. It needed about 1000% more gum baby, but she's like my favorite character, so maybe I'm biased. And I don't want to give spoilers, but like the villain or main antagonist in this one, I didn't find quite as compelling as the way it was done in the first book. What I think the book does so well, and it did this very well in the first installment as well, where Tristan had recently lost a friend and it deals a lot with grief, is that this book deals with extremely heavy topics, but in a completely age-appropriate way, but that doesn't necessarily gloss over things. Um, it's still very honest, but not overwhelming. So this one is focused less on the grief that he's dealing with in terms of his friend because he does work through some of those issues in the first book. This one is dealing more with trauma um, like that he's experienced but also the trauma of all of the characters who are from this like fantastical world of like folktale heroes. Um, the collective trauma that the peoples of this world have dealt with. And I found all of the scenes kind of dealing with that really heavy topic just like so well executed. So I would still highly recommend this. Um, the next middle grade book that I read was Rise of the Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. So this is based on Carib Caribbean folklore um, around these like kind of like monster type creatures that like live in the forest kind of like, you know, the boogeyman or those stories that grown-ups tell kids to scare them out of going to dangerous places. And in the first book, the protagonist Corinne finds out that jumbies are real and I won't give anything away for the first book. So much like with the Tristan Strong series, I preferred the first book, which was called just the jumbies. Um, this one I think was still really good um, and I would still recommend to middle grade readers um, but I think it was more of a personal preference thing where the first Jumpy's book 
um, was more like a middle grade horror novel, like fantasy horror. Um, and I found it like really creepy and I just really loved those horror elements in it. And this one was more like a fantasy like adventure. There were still jumbies in it, but the jumbies, um, we didn't see as much as the forest jumbies. This one's more set around like the ocean. So there's like mermaids and some other um, like sea jumby things. One thing that I found really interesting was that if you read The Deep by River Solomon, there were a lot of incredibly similar elements in this one, specifically like with the mermaids in this book. There were elements of forgetting and intergenerational trauma. Um, so it really um, was interesting to see like that similarity in this book, but like done for kids. Um, and one thing I really loved about this book and the first one as well is the group of friends. I find a really like well-rounded group and I find like all of the characters just like lovable in different ways. Um, I actually find Corinne, although she's a fine character, um, and she's the main character, I find all of her friends a little bit more compelling. So I really like the group in this book. So those were the middle grade things I read. Um, before I get to the classics, there's just one more thing I wanted to mention. I read The Girl Aquarium by Jen Campbell, um, who is a poet and author with a booktube channel. I will link it below. Um, this is a poetry collection. Um, if you are familiar with Jen Campbell, I think you could probably kind of guess <laughs> some of the like themes and imagery and stuff um, that were in this poetry collection. So that was the big takeaway for me. Um, her poems aren't very like narrative. They're, they're really based on imagery and they're quite like sensory. There were of course a lot of fairy tale elements and nods to different stories there. Um, a lot of imagery surrounding bodies and parts of bodies um, and also parts of like other animals bodies. Um, and for use in like comparison. And another um, kind of like running theme or, or imagery that was used a lot was um, different imagery surrounding water. Um, and I found specifically like the ethereal kind of like otherworldly element of water. There were a lot of um, passages surrounding like water and breath and lungs and um, yeah, so very heavy on imagery. I wouldn't say that this was incredibly accessible if you are like new to poetry um, or if you are looking for poems that have like a stronger like story type structure. But if you're into kind of like beautiful um, or not so beautiful, but like striking images, then I would check it out. Um, so the last couple of things I am going to just touch on very, very briefly because I will have other videos up about these, but two classics I read. Um, the first, Moby Dick, I actually read this from January uh, to March because I buddy read it um, with Courtney Ferreter. I am going to link to her review of Moby Dick because it is very thorough and I can't add anything or say anything that she hasn't already said in that review. And hers is like completely spoiler free, so you can get a good sense of what Moby Dick is like as a novel if you were interested in reading it. Um, all I'll say is that it is funny in parts, it is philosophical in parts, and the plot is also engaging. There were some parts that I found quite dry at the time, but I think I would appreciate more on a reread. And this is 100% a book that I will be reading again in the future. And the last thing that I read in March, I finished it up at the beginning of April, but I mostly read it in March, was Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. You hear people who just love Wuthering Heights and others who loathe it. And I don't know what I think. I definitely didn't loathe it. I definitely enjoyed Wuthering Heights. I definitely liked it. Probably really liked it. Remains to be seen whether I loved it. It's one of these books that I know is going to fester. <laughs> That's not the word I'm looking for. <laughs> like marinate might be a better word. Um, marinate in my brain for a while. There was a lot going on and it just wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting, but it's going to take me a lot of thinking to kind of parse out, I guess, my own opinions of it. I, I kind of wish I had 
buddy read this with someone um, because I feel like there's just like so much to dissect and I know there was so much that I missed and it would have been nice to discuss this with someone. What I appreciated about this book is that it has a like perfect mix I think of excellent um, plot, excellent characters, like not likable characters but really excellent characters in my opinion and um, excellent setting. So I feel like no matter what kind of things you gravitate towards as a reader you will find something to enjoy but I know that's not the case. I know a lot of people hate this book so I don't know what's up with that. I, I thought it was really really good and I feel like the more I think on it I'll probably go all the way to loving it and this is another one that I am 100% going to read again in the future. So those are the things that I read in March. If you have read any of these books and have any opinions on them please share them in the comments especially Wuthering Heights. Um, I would love to get like your opinion on whether you loved or hated that book or whether you're like me and don't really know what you think. Um, anyways thank you so much for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care!